Don Fry, President and CEO of the Greater Baltimore Committee, and welcome to GBC Insider, a program designed to hear from reporters, leaders in the private sector, and elected officials to gain insight on key issues in business and government. Today, GBC Insider is joined by Brian Sears, government reporter of the Daily Record, to discuss the recent Maryland General Assembly session. Brian, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Brian, this is your 20th year covering the Maryland General Assembly. You've seen a lot over that period of time, but this is a session like uh, I've described as no other. Talk a little bit about just the overall impact of how this session went compared to others uh, in a non-traditional and virtual way. Don, it, 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 I think it's fair to say that this is like nothing that I've ever seen in my lifetime and probably never will. Uh, this was condensed into 90 days, all of the societal um, issues that we've seen with COVID from trying to uh, avoid infections to the social distancing and, and the distance that you see, that the lack of physical and inter, interpersonal interactions um, that I think you and, and some of your viewers probably know were really, really important um, during a 90-day session. And, and all of that was tr changed dramatically. The, both presiding officers had set a very aggressive agenda uh, this year on a number of major issues. It seems like most of those were accomplished. Uh, what's your take with respect to uh, the significant achievements that they had during this session? Well, they, you know, they hit the ground running. I mean, even with the, uh, the House not meeting in person on the floor for the first 30 days, I mean, within the first month, the House and the Senate passed a pandemic relief plan that the affected businesses and, and a lot of other people in Maryland um, and, and got that signed by the governor within the first 30 days. We also saw a lot of work on equity issues. We got police reform done this year. We got a significant bill passed on uh, sports uh, gaming with a large equity component for minority owners. Um, I, I think there was a lot of heavy lifting. There were certainly things that didn't get done, but by and large, a lot of the big ticket items did move this year. Yeah. So you mentioned some heavy items did not get accomplished. Uh, I think there was legislation dealing with cannabis uh, legislation that has passed in other states that did not pass, and also uh, climate control. Talk about those a little bit. Yeah, I, look, I, I think I think that the legalization of recreational cannabis was probably always sort of an outlier stretch goal um, that has had a, a difficult that's been a difficult conversation here in Maryland. Um, the, the thing that was really kind of the surprise was the um, the climate solutions now bill that was uh, championed by. Senator Paul Pinsky that um, that ended up getting jammed up in the in the House and and resulted in a in a late conference committee that just really um, I think er from early in the day on Monday it was very clear that that bill was going to have trouble and ultimately just didn't make it. And the governor has indicated that he thought that this was a very successful session, very bi bipartisan. Uh, but there was an awful lot of veto overrides uh, during this session. How, how did you take uh, the interaction between the executive branch and the legislative branch on uh, various matters? Look, I, I, they, they come from two different parties, and I think they work together on some things with, for which there was agreement, like the, re, like the pandemic relief. Um, I, I, they worked very well together in, in doling out the $3.9, almost $4 billion in federal relief for one-time projects. Um, the, the governor got his health secretary nominee, which you know at one point was in doubt. Um, I, I don't read a whole lot into the veto overrides because in some cases, a lot of those vetoes came from bills that were from last session um, and then some front-loaded bills this year. So I'm still not certain for me how much to read into, the, into that because of the pandemic and what we've seen over the last, over the last 12 months. But in general, um, I think they worked well on the issues that they, that they had in common and on the others. Um, they, they had differences of opinion and worked on things that they could. And in the end, the General Assembly had numbers and, and, and got some of their priorities done. That's what we've seen in years past. And of course, last evening on the last night, the Sunny Die, they passed a number of bills, one dealing with immigration and some changes in immigration, some that the governor was not supportive of. Uh, do you see many vetoes coming down the road? 
Yeah, I think I think that's going to be an interesting to one one to watch, and I also think the other one to watch will be the uh, the the bill that removes the governor's approval from parole decisions. Um, the governor, while not taking a strong position on it during a meeting with reporters yesterday, certainly reinforced his belief that he has worked very hard to be conscientious about his uh, about his decisions. Um, and, and so I certainly think that there's a couple of bills that will likely be uh, ripe for vetoes if, if the governor decides to go in that direction. Well, Brian, look, we thank you for the valuable information that you've given us today as an overview of the uh, General Assembly, and thank you for uh, what you provide to us each day in the Daily Record and for that insider perspective on this year's legislative session. Uh, the GBC is going to continue to provide our members with more informative interviews with key insiders in the business and political community. Until the next time and the next edition of the GBC Insider, I'm Don Fry, urging you to stay safe, be healthy, get vaccinated, and remain positive.